Hi YouTube, it's AC Dodd here again and uh, this time I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about my recent solar PV installation. Um, as some people uh, know, the, the ones that frequent my Facebook page, I've recently had uh, 18 panels installed on my property um, and uh, I've been asked a few questions about it. So I just thought really I'll put a little video together so uh, people um, can find out a little bit more about what I've done and perhaps why I've done it. Um, effectively, uh, just to get straight down to it, I've had 18 panels put on the uh, roof. Total install capacity of 6.39 kilowatts. Um, and what that basically means is, uh, you know, if, if the sun was on all the panels, you'd get 6.39 kilowatts maximum output. Um, in reality, I don't have that uh, capability purely because my actual house is not what they call ideal for solar. Uh, so what I mean by that is uh, I have uh, a roof which isn't south facing so uh, what I what I uh, have to do is to compensate by having more panels than I would actually need uh, and I also have shading issues so that uh, further uh, creates a problem so um, what I've basically done there is uh, installed 6.39 um, kilowatt hours of panels which is over 18 panels but in order to um, negate the shade, I've had to spread that out over the property. Um, and uh, we can have a quick look at that now. Uh, here are the pictures showing uh, what I mean. This is the six panels that are installed on the garage roof. The six panels that are installed between the two windows on the house roof. And finally, the six panels that are installed on the gable end of the house. So as you can see, what I've got here really is uh, three separate installations. So I've got uh, six panels on the uh, garage roof, which is uh, what where I'm sitting now, which is basically my workshop. Uh, I've got six panels on the main house uh, on the roof, and that's in between the two um, uh, windows that you can see there. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I, uh, I had to spread these out, simply because I didn't have the uh, space on the roof. Uh, and the way the um, the windows were basically meant I would have an issue um, with shade. So I've had to put the six panels where they are and then lift them high up to the ridge uh, to minimise the shade. And then um, you'll also see that I've also installed six panels on the gable end uh, of the building. And there's a, you know, one of the reasons again is shade, but the other reason is, is because I don't have a battery storage. Um, one of the things that you need to think about when you get into solar is solar is very individualistic. And what I mean by that is if you are uh, planning solar, then you need to understand your total uh, kilowatt hours um, consumption and ideally when in the day that you'll be using those uh, kilowatt hours. So in my case, um, I think I checked with the electricity supply companies and you're talking sort of three to to four thousand for the kind of kind of average house if that makes sense well i i'm seven to seven and a half thousand kilowatt hours a year for my property so um that basically means uh that i need you know quite a few panels uh, and also uh because of my high demand uh, i either need a very high uh capacity battery um and also my usage most of that usage, I can use half of my daily energy between six o'clock in the evening and midnight. So I'd, I would have to have a very large battery to put up with that discharge load, uh, which means it's very expensive. So um, uh, not wanting to to spend that kind of money on a maybe a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack, um, I decided to have my solar uh, in, in the terms of what I call, which is long solar. So um, in the summer months, um, where I've just had it installed in in August, I get um, you know 13 hours of sun. I get I get the sun from when it comes up right the way to when it goes down as it moves over the property and down onto the gable end, um, and that enables me to capture the sun for a long period of time. What it doesn't enable me to do is to capture um, you know very high peak output. So the most I've seen is about 5,500 peak. Um, so I'm losing almost a kilowatt um, in terms of uh, the, the total positioning where the sun can catch the panels all the time because it effectively can't. Um, but what it does mean is I capture the sun for the full length of the day. 
uh, and that also means where I haven't got a battery, I can be using uh, the energy in the evening. So um, when we're cooking, for example, uh, the actual um, energy is still being produced by the sun and then we can obviously use that to cook the food. Uh, whereas if you, as far as I understand, uh, if you have a typical sort of south facing roof with all your panels in one place, you get very, very good high output, but you get it for a much shorter period of time. So like nine hours or something like that. Um, so <clears throat> when, you know, one of the things I found is as soon as you say to people, oh, I'm not having a battery, they, you know, oh, you know, you're not doing the right thing and all the rest of it. That's what I've worked out with the solar is that, um, uh, batteries are one of those things that technically it's the right thing to do uh, because you know use the when the uh, energy is available from the sun obviously store it uh, use it in the evening however uh, financially that may not be a good thing so you know what I was looking at there effectively if I went for a battery storage um, maybe in about 12 years I'd have to replace that battery so um, and that battery may uh, may have come down in price, but at current prices, I'm probably looking at 800, 900 pound a month to save um, towards that over the next 12 years. Um, you know, that's not saving, <laughs> uh, certainly for me. So I, 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 I urge people to sort of really sit down and work out what they need for solar, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, things that sound right may, may be right for you, but for other people, they're not. So you really need to look into it, and this is what I found: is solar installations are sort of very personal to the to the property and the family that's uh, that's that's living in that property. So uh, with the three sets of panels, I uh, have that split up into three separate um, systems. So on each of those panels uh, installation, on each six panels, I've got a Solis S6 inverter, uh, two and a half kilowatt, um, and uh, they're all. Uh, separately uh, installed and they run into obviously uh, the main junction box um, and then feed the house. These are the two Solis S6 inverters I've installed in the roof space of the house. One is for the gable end panels and the other uh, is for the panels on the roof. This is the third Solis S6 inverter, again uh, another two and a half kilowatt item and it's fitted in the uh, garage along with a transfer switch. I also uh, have in the workshop a transfer switch which basically means that uh, in the future I can convert to running the uh, garage only uh, on a battery um, and, and I considered if I do a battery it's still not worthwhile in terms of the money I'll save but if I was to invest in a battery system to run that to reduce the, the cost of energy on the house, um, at least if I did it that way, I could then take that battery pack with me. So I'd use uh, in the form of a, um, a solar generator, a large one, so at least sort of 3.6 kilowatts, so EcoFlow uh, Delta um, Pro, something like that, or a Blue Eti AC 500. Um, that, that would be something I would consider because it's more useful to me um, I don't, I, you know, I'm not just stuck with the, um, uh, uh, you know, battery on the wall and I can't use it. Um, if I use uh, the solar generator type arrangement, I can take it with me. So when I do a car show and things like that and I'm doing tuning, uh, I can, you know, I can put that in the car and I've got all the power I'm ever going to need. Um, so that, that appeals to me more. Um, but at the moment, I haven't got the money, so I will... Uh, I will con continue to look at the market and see what options come available as time develops because right now, as far as I can see, uh, new products are coming to market all the time, uh, more and more exciting ones. Uh, so I think at the time for me, it's, it's time to wait and see what comes out. So together with the panels and the uh, three inverters, I also have a solar iBoost installed as well, which basically diverts excess solar uh, power from the panels and puts it into my hot water. I consider this something uh, necessary if I haven't got battery storage that I need at least uh, to divert that energy to the um, heat the gas. And uh, again, uh, currently at the moment, the, the relative cost uh, between the gas and electricity uh, you don't save a massive amount, but what you do save uh, is a small saving on your gas bill. Um, I haven't worked that out yet, so I, I need to obviously uh, get some figures, but I don't know the relative efficiency of my boiler compared to uh, 
uh, how many kilowatt hours of gas it takes to, to heat water versus how many kilowatt hours of electricity. Um, so once I get those figures, I'll be able to, um, you know, be able to uh, understand what that's all about. But in this, in this case, um, I'm really interested in using the solar that I'm uh, producing uh, and also reducing the gas that I'm burning as well. So if I've got three separate installs, how do I monitor it all? Well, I've got a system that um, the contractor who I um, um, got in to put my solar installation in, uh, it uses um, uh, freely available software and uh, a couple of Raspberry Pi computer units to, uh, along with some current clamps. And it takes the information from all three installations, combines it, um, and then gives me uh, a phone app, which then I can look at uh, at any time. I'll include a picture of that uh, in the video so people can see that. Um, and uh, for me, it's it's what I need. Uh, I can see what I'm using in the workshop. I can then, uh, you know, match that to the solar that's coming in if I need to. Um, so, yeah, I find that quite useful. And uh, I see little point in having a, um, you know, a solar installation. You need some sort of telemetry. So... So, uh, yeah, highly recommend to have uh, any system that you have installed is to have some telemetry so you understand when the sun's being produced, um, you know, when it's cloudy um, and when you can use the energy. Um, and obviously, if you have a battery install, if, you do, if, it does, uh, if that does suit you, um, you know, the, the status of the battery and when it is charging um, so you can understand your system a little bit more and how to get the best out of it. So then, then we get on to cost, um, and you know what's the you know what's the return on interest and you know payback period and all the rest of it. Well, for me that's complicated because that really depends on how much the energy is going to cost in the future. Uh, obviously, the energy prices now are very high. Um, I can't personally see the energy prices coming down hugely over the next twenty years. I think they're going to come down a bit and then obviously rise. Uh, so it's a bit of a gamble. Um, my installation costs. Um, I would say nearly, uh, currently, uh, nearly twice, okay, what uh, the average install was. And that's because I had to have a lot of custom work, like all those panels on the side of the property, the gable end, uh, custom made um, bracketry, uh, which all had to be made up on site. So that obviously adds to the cost over a standard install. If you've got a standard install, and, you know, one inverter and a roof, you just bang the lot on, it's a lot cheaper. Um, so for me, uh, if I was to use static pricing, you know, I'll be looking at about 20 year payback. Um, however, uh, price as the energy price increases, my payback comes down. And so for me, the, you know, you might think, well, why, why invest in solar? Well, for me, it's more of a case of uh, energy security. So what I mean by that is if uh, energy goes up to the point where it's very expensive, um, I can't realistically cut my energy. Uh, so I need to generate my own. So for me, it's a kind of an insurance policy. So it's less about return on investment. It's more about being able to continue to do what I do. So so that's why I do it. Um, the other thing is, it's obviously the feel good factor. Uh, you know, if I'm machining on my lathe and I'm hogging away, uh, chewing a flywheel out um, and taking off big heavy cuts, it's, a, it's an excellent feeling when that's not costing you a bean. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, some customers also like the fact that... Um, uh, the energy I use is, um, you know, greener. So that's that's something to think about. Um, it's not for everyone solar. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that uh, some people don't, you know, don't want that on their homes or they don't, you know, they don't see the benefit of it or they're just interested in saving money. Um, well, that's fine. You know, I'm not going to tell anybody that you need to go out and buy solar and all the rest of it because at the end of the day, it's personal to you. Um, all I can say is from my experience and a few others that I've spoke to, uh, solar has been good for me so far. I've only had this system installed about, about five or six weeks now. Uh, in terms of savings, uh, on a sunny day, I'm saving two thirds um, on what I was paying. And uh, on a cloudy day, I'm, I'm saving about a third. So I'm still saving a considerable amount of money, even when the sun's not in and, and uh, not out. Sorry, beg your pardon. And the reason for that is because I have so much surface area, um, you know, uh, I can still capture a reasonable amount of energy. So with my baseline uh, load around four to six hundred watts during the day, um, I have a mother-in-law that lives with me and she's here all day. So 
uh, what's actually happening is even on a cloudy day, I'm capturing enough energy to effectively um, virtually stop my electricity meter during the day, even when she's watching the TV, etc. Um, so yeah, I can't see how this is a uh, this is a bad thing at all. And the other thing that people don't seem to think about is, you know, I've installed this solar, and I'm obviously when I'm not using the energy, I'm exporting to the grid. Now. If I'm exporting to the grid, other houses are using that. Um, yes, I will get paid. I'm still going through the process of setting up the paperwork. But if I'm exporting to the grid and other people are using that, that means turbines aren't turning as fast and we're not burning as much fossil fuel. Um, and perhaps uh, there's you know more um, wind power and s solar power generated elsewhere to go around for other people. So at the end of the day, uh, I think it's one of those sort of things that you pay it forward. If you put it back into the system, this is going to benefit everybody in the future. So, um, you know, I'm glad to have done my little bit, but uh, unfortunately, um, you know, due to the cost, it's it's not for everyone. So um, if you can put a solar system on, then I'd absolutely uh, recommend that. Um, in terms of uh, the how I did it, I, I didn't do it at all. So uh, you know, I think people seem to get the idea that I might have done it. No. I use the company um, MG Cable, very, very, very good company, uh, excellent electricians. So uh, I'll put the details up on the screen. There you go. Um, and uh, if you need to speak to those guys there, Mark uh, is the guy that you get through to when you call him. And he's excellent. Uh, he was the only person when I looked into it that actually bothered to do any more than just look at the... Uh, your roof on, um, you know, a satellite image photograph, and give you a standard insulation. I told him that I don't have, a, I don't want a standard insulation. I've got uh, machine tools that I want to run. I've got high energy uh, usage, and I have shade. So he was able to uh, help me um, go through that process. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, you know, after talking to him, I was out there with my camera taking pictures of where the shadows were at the morning, during the day and the evening. So I built up a picture of where the best place to put my panels was. So the panels are on the positions they are is because that's the t uh, the place that my property gets the most sun. Um, you know, there's no point in putting panels in shaded areas. I mean, that's just wasting money. Um, so, you know, my view of solar is, uh, if you can't afford a, a massive solar install with a battery and everything, my suggestion is just get panels up on the roof, all right? Surface area is king because what you can do in the future is once you've got the surface area up there, you can use that energy for whatever you like. And in the future, when a lot more people are using um, electric cars, uh, having solar panels on the roof uh, means that you've got at least one option for gaining some energy back um, for you know charging that car. And car charging requires a lot of power, and that means a lot of solar panels so bear that in mind if you're having an install uh, you know my advice is go large okay anyway um hopefully that's been useful it's a kind of a quick walkthrough of my system uh with a few pictures uh if that's been useful to you then uh, then um excellent uh if it hasn't been useful to you then um well you can go and look at another channel and, and talk uh, and and see uh, another person's install but uh if you need any more information, then, uh, you know, leave leave some questions maybe in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to them. Um, I am very busy, so I do find that sometimes challenging to answer all those, but uh, I'll do my best in the case of this video. Anyway, as ever, please like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you soon, no doubt, with some more tuning. Thank you very much.